Hello, welcome back to Bitcoin Beats. Wait for the drop. Hope you're all having a fantastic day here. My name is Hamilton. I'm going to be walking through the Bitcoin markets today. I'm a professional trader, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to be giving you any affiliate links, sponsors, any of that stuff. Just here to give you some value and really just teach you how to think about the markets in a correct way so you can make your own trades rather than following signals and losing money, right? Because uh, that's not how you should trade. <laughs> Spoiler alert there, right? So we're going to be going through the short term for Bitcoin, the mid term for Bitcoin, the long term for for old bitty here and some ethereum as well because uh that is worth talking about because everything's pretty much gone <laughs> exactly as, as we predicted right <laughs> as old as old kylie boy would say right but uh yeah beginning with what's happened here yes we did plot out this channel uh, we did find respect on this this was hypothetical by us just copy and pasting this line dragging it down and saying hey yeah uh if if we come down and find support here then it's going to make this uh potential uh well it's going to make this valid right as uh <coughs> as a channel, right? And when we break that channel, we can look at measure meters towards the downside. Hello, hello, what have we got here, mate? There, we've got a nice little fall off a cliff, big old girthy megalodonithic dump coming through towards the downside and fulfilling that measure move uh, that we had plotted in in more of a hypothetical way, but uh, it still, it worked out nicely, right? Um, I'd obviously I predicted all of this, right? But uh, we have to be aware that yes, if we did find support here, then this would be a valid pattern. And then we had a, a valid measure move if we lose that, right? Uh, we did lose that. Uh, we did come down pretty horrifically here. It was a bit of a good dub coming through. But uh, at the end of the day, it was a quick wick thing, right? A very arthury move, if I were to say so. We can see if we go down to the five minutes, this was quick sticks. This was very quick here. You can see this, uh, just finding that 200 on the five minute and bouncing off of it. Um, um, yeah, just general stuff here saying yes, uh, that that was fairly expected anyway, considering we're overextended and, uh, and pumping towards the moon, right? So uh, with that, we found support on our volume weighted ATR band, this red line coming up here, this, this, this red line that we say, hey, if we're above, we're usually in a pretty sustained uptrend, right? And we, we talk about this every video, but it is important to highlight this. So just quickly, uh, let's take a look here. We get over this bad boy here like this, then we get our big pump from 40 to 50K, right? Um, we go back further here, uh, we do have traps and stuff on there, and this is why it's important to look at everything here, right? But typically, yes, if we are playing out a measure move, and if it is healthy, then we will be above that band, okay? So, that's what I would say there, uh, and moving forward with this, I can say, hey, yes, where are we now, and what are the predictions that follow, right? Uh, after this bounce on the price action channel, on the volume weighted ATR band, and a test of the 55 as well, we have had a pretty significant reaction here. Actually, uh, making another all-time high, which is pretty incredible, uh, which is actually fairly bullish, but again, it is still a weekend. We're going to have to wait to see how this reacts uh, throughout the rest of the day, and then we'll reassess this on Monday, right? Me personally, my positions, before we get into any predictions here, guys, uh, my positions right now, still in the long, did take some profit here at each one of these lines, as we said, right? Uh, and we've said that basically... Once we got over this blue box zone here, right, let me just get rid of the wad for a, just, a, just a quick little minute here, right, we can say yes. Uh, what we did here on the short term is wait for that break of the horizontal, wait for the volume to come through, get in along, take profit each one of these lines, secure that profit, make the girthy gains, and then whatever happens now, if we do start falling off a cliff, if we do start coming down here, uh, then yeah, we can exit our trade, and we're at a point now, bringing in the WAD machine here on the short term, where, uh, what do we say here, guys? We're in a long, we're taking profit, we're making money, and what we're gonna do here is just have our stop loss below this 55, and if we start closing candles below that 55, uh, as a more kind of a professional way to trade it, right? You could just have it below here, and then re-enter when we do start breaking out again, that's, that's fine as well, uh, but me 
personally, I was basically watching these and saying, hey, uh, I don't think we break this time. I am expecting traps around this zone. So until we start really opening and closing candles below this bad boy, uh, then I won't be exiting my trade just yet, right? So uh, yes, we've tested this a few times uh, and yes, it's been pretty good. But overall, even on this one, I didn't, uh, I didn't get stopped out or anything because I basically kept it a little bit lower here. Just saying, hey, yes, uh, I do expect this weekend shenanigans to be whippy uh, going around quite a lot here. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, this is this is kind of a scenario that I was expecting to happen. This is why I kept my stop loss a bit lower. Okay, as of right now, what I'm going to do here with this horizontal for my position here before we do get into predictions, right? Uh, just really clarify how I'm going to be managing this position, right? Uh, is essentially just having my stop loss just below this low here because this is now a horizontal low. And we can also say that, hey, we have a trend line here coming up. Um, and yes, you could, if you're a little bit more cautious, just have your stop loss just below the 55, just below this trend line as well. That's fine. But me personally, I'm, I'm expecting more wickiness. So what I will do here is just keep this below. And if we do lose this wick here, if we do lose this potential horizontal support. For me, that's going to be the nail in the coffin. And I would say that we go down from there, right? But overall, this trade has been fantastic. Uh, we've made ridiculously girthy gains, taking profit along the way, right? And just saying, hey, yes, that's 10% secured on the account. Big bap, that's what we're after here at the end of the day, right? Uh, in terms of what's left in, I've got about 20% left in to either take profit as we hit these and close the trade out at 60, right? Or what we're gonna do here is, as we said, lose this low, and then the 20% we have left in will still secure us about 7% profit, right? So overall, we're gonna be looking at like a, actually no, because we, we took some profit, uh, we'll say like 8% uh, overall, like 8.5% here from this trade, if we do close this in a, in a kind of bad scenario, uh, a bad scenario being 7% profit, what a life, okay? But yes, that is, that's essentially what we're looking at here for my positions and how I'm going to be playing this going forward. But in terms of predictions here, right? And this would just put the trade up as a nice trade coming through. And obviously if we get up higher and we, we bang this up here, higher the average would go up a couple percent as well for the take profits. But overall, I am just, I got like 20% left in, chilling here. I don't really care what happens. Maybe I'll re-enter if we do get a nice little dump here, back down, maybe test this blue box again and then bang it up from there. Uh, but that's more for a longer term thing. We'll, we'll get to that in a minute. For what I'm saying right now for predictions is yes, uh, we have played out this channel. I am going to get rid of this now because it is less relevant, okay? And we've played out the measure moves. Let's just see what we can see here with a fresh look on the charts right here on Sunday. The day of God here. What can we say? What can we do? We can say, hey, yes, uh, this is something that we're looking at right now. These are confirmed bottoms and confirmed tops. So we can say, yes, we can look for a measure move off of this as well, right? So if we are looking for a measure move, it's gonna be one side to the other uh, of the most recent wave. And if we do break over that high here, and then remember it is a weekend, so we, we might not get this high up and it might like trap or whatever, right? Because it is a weekend, right? Um, that does happen on the weekend because institutions aren't trading. There's less liquidity in the markets. It's going to be a lot more, uh, a lot, a lot more of a whipsaw for for old Bitty here. So yes, if we get over this, and I would say basically get over 58k here, I would expect 60k to be touched. But uh, with it being a weekend, we should be careful with this, right? Uh, we should be careful. And, and what I will do is literally, as I said, right, just take profit at these last few lines, uh, 59.4, right, and then closing the trade out about 61k here uh, to to really get it done right and we can see here yeah maybe we'll go for 60 here uh, maybe we'll go for 60 just in case uh, but that's what I would say there for the upside. If we do lose this 55 here, also lining up with this trend line we can see, right, uh, it's a bit of an iffy one because we have this massive wick, right? So if we were to draw a trap zone, the trap zone would actually just absorb the measure move. So uh, it's not fantastic, right? It's not great to be looking for shorts at all in a bear market to, or in a bull market to, to, to be frank, right? Uh, but if we were to do that, and those of you guys that are bears and you want that, then uh, yeah, if I were to put a number on this, yeah, 53.7 would be the measure move for that or, or somewhere around there right uh, and uh, for me that's that's also where I'm going to be looking to get stopped out as well uh, for for a stop loss in profit right people hear the word stop loss and they, they think such a negative thing it's not a negative thing if you're making money right this is just the final close trade take profit uh, and yes it's not as high as it could be but uh, if it is there we're still happy we still bag the bag yeah we, we're out here trapping in the bitcoin streets making that money fam 
you know that. So yeah, that's what we're looking for there. Uh, that is there. And uh, if we do come down lower than that, then I would be expecting, yeah, 50k, a little tappy tap on that. Uh, and then hopefully uh, we can make another measure move here and uh, and really just go for gold here and, and potentially get a nice trade again. Rinse and repeat as we do here uh, and make the girthy gains here. So that's the predictions for the short term. Bringing it up to the mid. Bringing it up to the mid here. I would say... Yeah, looking pretty good, looking pretty fine. I can't really hate this right now, guys, because we are in an uptrend. We are maintaining our parabolic uh, structure here, right? This is this is it, right? This is it. If I'm, that's that's what we're maintaining, right? Now. If we lose that, obviously we can go sideways. And honestly, guys, I'm hoping we do, right? You might be thinking, but Hamilton, you're in a long. Why are you hoping we go sideways? It's because. If we go sideways like this, for example, come down, tap the 55 here, 51k, big bap on the 51k there, then we could potentially make another pattern here. And what do we do with patterns in a bull market? We wait for the breakout right there, right here, right now. And then what we do is we bang it, okay? We make the girthy gains. We measure up a nice move to $70,000. That's what we're after here, right? So. Yes, if we break structure on the midterm, not going to be great, and we might be in for like a week of sideways or something, but what we need to continue forward here in a healthy, non fomorific way is a pattern, right? We don't have a pattern right now. We've completed all the measure moves. We are literally just mooning for no reason at this point, right? People are buying, it's going up, right? Uh, but... Uh, what I want to see here, as I said, is some kind of pattern to form, whether it is uh, a channel, whether it is a sending triangle, uh, whatever, right? Something. Just give me something, Bitcoin. Uh, and then we are good, right? And then we are good to go for another uh, long uh, and, and another re-entry. If that doesn't happen, and if we don't get that, what we'll be looking for here is essentially bounces uh, and claiming these moving averages again uh, with some nice bit of volume as well and saying, hey, yes, bang it in, take some profit and uh, a little bit more advanced trading there. But uh, at the end of the day, from a common sense perspective, don't be trying to short the top here, guys. What I would say instead is just wait for the next breakout, uh, take profit along the way, and make the money, right? At the end of the day, it's make money. We gotta make the money, and we're not gonna make money shorting in a bull market, are we? No. <laughs> so uh, don't do that. Uh, but yeah, generally here for the midterm, uh, I can't really, I can't really um, make any measure moves from this because there aren't any, right? Um, we could say something like this, but this in itself is very, very steep, okay? Uh, and you could just draw something like that. Yeah, if, if we lose this kind of structure coming down to 54 again, uh, just makes sense, all right? And uh, if we lose that structure, that's where we're exiting the trade. And that's also an area where we can say, hey, we're, we're now in cash. Let's wait for either a breakout towards the upside or wait for a, a bigger pullback here where we can look for some consolidation, bigger patterns to form, uh, measure moves to be played, and then make the money. That's that's it. That's what I'm looking for. That's the midterm. And in terms of predictions here, it's really if we lose 51k here for the midterm over the next few days, uh, that's going to be uh, the, the big signal, the big sign for me where we say, hey, yes, uh, the, the mid to low 40s are in range for us to have a little tappy tap in that area. But overall here, I would say, yes, the trend is still strong. We are above our volume weighted ATR band, right? It is looking okay. And the last time we got up above this was when we broke over 20k right so looking at this on a midterm perspective pullbacks to this area yeah that's fine right and, but as long as we maintain above it we should think the trend is strong and uh, we haven't actually been above it for this long this time right so uh, an extension of this trend potentially up to the 70s wouldn't surprise me at all right before uh, inevitably coming down uh, and having some more consolidation or price action here um, and that would be it for the midterm there the long term right we are going to bring this up and uh, just show you the plan here, show you what's good, show you the ultimate girth strategy here coming through. And what I would say, what I would say, if you asked me and you said, Hamilton, look, what's good? What is this strategy you're on about? Just show us. Show us what's going on here, mate. And I will, okay? I will show you what's going on, uh, starting with the uh, round of blues, right? Those of you that are regulars here, Bear with me again. It is a Sunday, the day of God here. We, we are just going to chill uh, and we are just going to explain what's going on. So, uh, yes, this is uh, an indicator called the rounded blue boxes, right? This is, uh, and ignore this, these, let's just get rid of this. Right? Get, 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 get off my screen. There we go, right? So, 
This is the setup. This is what we've been using here, uh, not from the dawn of time, but more recently, I would say, since we since we had our March crash, we'd basically be saying, hey, yes, uh, when we reclaim this line, it's great. Okay, and we are in this, what's called a linear regressional growth curve. And what that means is, it sounds really complex, but really goes from the start of Bitcoin's history here, you can see $2, right, whatever it was, uh, and then it, it plots out the highs and the lows, and then creates a curve and uh, a general mathematical algorithm to predict future supports and resistances using Fibonacci as well, right? If you don't know what that means, doesn't matter, right? What what you need to know is uh, it curves over time based on the highs and lows, right? That's it. That's the, the simple way to explain it. Uh, and what that's done here, if we do zoom in, if we have a little zoomy zoom in here, not the app, okay? We're not in a Zoom meeting. We're talking about zoomy. Look, Come on, mate. Uh, we can see that we have <laughs> our supports and resistances here pretty nicely plotted in uh, throughout these past runs here. And this is the, the 20K run, as you can see, right? Uh, and you can see that it's very, very tradable, okay? We never lose this white line uh, before the March crash anyway, right? We've only ever trapped below it. So once we did lose it, we reclaimed it. And once we reclaimed it, we knew it was still valid. And this is basically goes down as like a standard deviational thing, in my opinion, right? Other traders I've spoke to will have a completely different opinion to me and say, okay, this whole thing needs to be adjusted. Uh, what are you doing, Amazon? You got to adjust this now based on the new maths, right? Uh, and yes, I would agree with them to some extent there. But uh, the fact that we reclaim this means it's still valid, right? And I'm not gonna uh, just scrap a strategy that's still valid, right? And we know uh, the run we've had up here, it has been working, right? So it, it turned out to be a good call there. We can see all the trades that we have made based on this, using this, and just making the girthy gains over the past year, right? So uh, the next thing I want to say here is the bull market barrier. The bull market barrier, if you don't know what that is, completely free trading view indicator, just type it in here, just bull market barrier, bull, where is it? <laughs> is it even here? Did he take it down? Oh no, we're good. Uh, by a guy called Nish19, a uh, very accomplished, very good guy, right? And uh, he's made this completely free for you guys to use, right? And what this does, it uses some uh, some uh, Bollinger Band stuff, it uses some uh, EMA stuff, some Fibonacci as well thrown in there, uh, and those are usually good combinations. You can see here, right? What this does, it plots out the uh, the the part of the cycle we are in essentially right so even if we go down to like a 15 buck bitcoin we get over this bad boy we're in a bull market right um we test it we get bounces off of it right we lose it we start a bear market right uh, we gain it again we get a transitional period and then we start another bull market right we come back down we bounce off of it right we bounce off of that right <laughs> and then we lose it right and then we come down, we start another bear market, right? So this is quite easy uh, to trade here if you know what you're doing, if you have the right tools like so, right? I gotta stop saying right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, after the, the bear market is done, we can see we find support on this bottom growth curve. Great stuff. Great for finding Bitcoin bottoms there. Uh, and as well as that, we can say yes, uh, we get our transitional period like so. And then what do you know, guys? What do you know? We start our long bull market here. And with these massive dumps and massive sell offs here, where the FOMO basically ends, right? Uh, people get scared, they dump it off, we come back down, and we bounce off this bad boy every single time time. So as long as we are above this bad boy, um, and, and I'll, I'll show you the what it is in a minute, right, where we are now, then yeah, I am happy for us to, to be longing and be looking for longs rather than shorts. As soon as we lose it, like we did here, right, at like 10k, I would say, uh, in 2017, right, or 2018, right, when the bull market ended, then yeah, we start our bear market, blah, 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 blah. We hit the bottom, right? We could have taken a long here, but uh, we, we hit this. It's, it's then plots out some very, very nice tops here through Bitcoin in the past few years, which is fantastic, right? Then what happens now? Transitional period. Okay, we come up, we come up. Uh, and now we have it here where we can say, where is the floor for Bitcoin? The, the absolute bottom for me, right? And some of the pros I have been talking to as well have basically been saying that um, 38, 40K, is really the floor for Bitcoin right now. If we did dump, they would, wouldn't be expecting to go below that point, okay? And I can say, yeah, I agree with them there for sure, but if we did get a massive crash, and we're talking people selling off left, right, center, okay? We're talking big, girthy dumps here, big megalodonithic dumps all over you, okay? What I'm saying here, if that happens, uh, I'm looking at 28, potentially, if we, if we are like predicting where this will be next week, right? 30K. 
30k is going to be my bottom uh, around that zone. And if we do come down there, I do expect a V-shaped recovery. Very, very quick times. I will be looking for a, a rapid long in there as soon as it's confirmed that it's not like a, a death crash like we had in March, right? Uh, and we can see as well here compared to the, the 2020 run, yes, we have had V-shaped recoveries uh, based on that. Uh, if I do just bring it to like a, tw uh, is it gonna show on a 12 hour? Can I go back that far here? It just, yeah, this might be a little bit weird for your eyes guys, but do need to show it, okay? It is important value for you guys to see this so we can see, right? V-shaped recoveries whenever we hit this bad boy, this is it. This is what we have been using for this bull run uh, more often than not anyway, right? And it's been working and why would you stop using something that works <laughs> at the end of the day, right? So yes, looking at looking at this and, and using moving averages is fine, right? But if we're looking for the, the wider, broader, longer term scope here, yes, uh, I would say 28, 30K here over the next few weeks. If we did get a massive crash coming into March, yeah, I mean, yeah, that would be the, the kind of bottom area I would be looking for a potential V-shaped recovery if that did happen, right? Uh, but right now, it's bullish, can't really hate it. Uh, and as long as the FOMO does continue, we could be looking at a potential top of $100,000 here before a significant pullback, right? We can obviously break through this and go to the moon, right? Depends how many dollars they print, depends how many people get involved, right? But overall, I am expecting us to basically maintain around this zone. I do expect a lot of shorts to be coming in uh, when we do hit that 100K zone. One, because it's a mental barrier. Two, uh, there are some fibs lining up with it. And and three here on certain time frames anyway. Um, and three here, it's just, it's 100K. And we've got obviously the, the, the growth curve here being a, a potential top, which is, uh, it's based on maths, right? So you don't argue with maths, you just go with it. Uh, but if we do get over it, we, we, we have other strategies. We have moving averages to play by, as we said, right? Uh, similar to what we have now on the short term where we don't have any measure moves, we don't have any patterns, but uh, we're happy to ride this up uh, and just play it correctly, right? Uh, so that's what I would say there. And uh, yeah, in summary here for Bitcoin, we are just gonna play this level by level, right? Level by level, ignoring the blue zones, not being in a trade in them. And then once we get over those crucial Fibonacci points, then we enter again, take profit each one of the lines and get it done here. We're all about making money, make money here. That's what we're after. So that is that. And overall this trade has gone fantastically. So we are happy with that, okay? Um, if you are a little bit cautious, a little bit, uh, you, don't, you don't trust what I'm saying or whatever, just look, through my past videos, you'll see the trades I make. I don't delete any of my videos like some of these other guys, right? Um, I don't accept sponsors either, right? I'll always tell you guys what I'm doing and you can see the trades I've had in the past as well. If you do wanna go back to those dates, right? We got the 6th or, or whatever here when I did 7th of January when I got in that trade. If you wanna go back, go go for it, go for it. I I, I encourage you to, right? Just, just for your own kind of thing. And yeah, if you wanna spread that love to more people, drop a little like, leave me a comment, let me know what you're doing this week for old Bitcoin and where you think it's gonna go. But uh, just for finishing this up here, we'll say, hey, what's good Ethereum? Mrs. Ethereum coming through with a little bit of a trappy trap on this wedge, as you can see, right? I did say this is something that I expect to happen yesterday, okay? And this did happen, and it's not something that I, I was saying is definitely gonna happen, but uh, typically we will trap a lot of the time with altcoins on the weekend, right? Uh, it's still an all-time high, so don't really hate it, okay? Don't hate it too much. It does look like we are bouncing, does look like we are recovering, just seems like some a big player or something decided to, or some manipulational thing, right? Decided to say, hey, let's trap, let's, let's, uh, Let's uh, liquidate some people, right? <laughs> By a bit, I'm looking at you. But yeah, overall here, for the long term for Ethereum, looking pretty good. I will say, yeah, we're above all major moving averages. That's typically a good sign. We're above our volume weighted ATR band here, which is currently at 1,570, right? Can't hate that either. We bring it down to an hourly, what can we see? What can we see here? Yeah, I mean, it looks pretty progressive here, but it is a tough one because this is just very trappy action, right? Instant recoveries to both sides. So yeah, be careful with this coin right now. Again, with altcoins for me, you guys know the drill, right? I am just holding them, waiting for wait for the Bitcoin bull run to end. And when this run eventually ends, and again, bringing it back to this bull market barrier, right? When we lose this bull market barrier, wherever it may be, what I expect to happen here is altcoins to have a massive, massive pump arena here where everyone's like, okay, Bitcoin's done, bang it into alts, let's go. Uh, and then, I will have exited Bitcoin, obviously, because I won't be, if it's going down, I'm not gonna be long, right? <laughs> um, 
and so I wouldn't be looking to, to get in Bitcoin if we lose this, right? If we if we confirm under it, we, we keep it low, right? Uh, and then altcoins will bang it. We get out of our altcoin positions. We wait for the next kind of transitional thing to confirm the bear market. And then when that bear market comes in, guys, for the super long term, that's where we're going. Uh, and, and then we start looking for shorts, right? And, and then we can start talking about more leverage trades here, uh, which uh, some of you guys like, but <laughs> guys, I'm not talking about 50X, 25X, right? I'm just talking about like a one or two X leverage short uh, where you're gonna make more money that way, right? Um, because you do make less money shorting. That's just a fact, right? So we wanna get a little bit more risk there. Uh, and again, that's only if the bear market's confirmed, right? If Bitcoin's still bullish, chill out, right? And if we do have a massive dump here and we do come back down uh, to test this bottom side, which is at 14.8 right now, okay, that's going to be an area where I'm looking for a bottom. So let's say we enter a bear market. I'm going to be looking for a bottom around here and I'm probably going to long somewhere around here as well. Uh, and, and literally... Uh, just take some profit as long as the as long as it's a good run like so let's say we have something like we had uh, from the 6k dump here where we do come down uh, and then we test this this bottom side and then we do get the significant breakout that looks pretty good yeah a little long here coming up uh, to wherever this bull market barrier is where we know it just is so good at cooling tops right so why wouldn't we just take a nice long if the trend is good uh, up to there right and that probably goes against what I'm saying but I am saying what I'm what I'm saying for for the noobs right you don't short in a bull market Market, you don't long in a bear market right but this is a bullish trending asset right so if we are looking at the super long term it's it's been in a bull market for a very long time right <laughs> it's never been in a bear market if you look at it really long term right so uh with that perspective yes if we do hit a significant bottom here on a growth curve yeah putting a long in if the breakout looks good uh, and and just taking profit at that uh, that blue box, that not that blue box, the uh, the bull market barrier. Yeah, it makes sense here, right? So that's the video. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you've got some value from this, and I will see you in the next one here, guys, um, tomorrow, right, for another update. Peace out and goodbye. <laughs>